The News Hour Special Edition. Joining me tonight on the News Hour is S. Guru Murthy, the man who knows uh, how politics works in the whole of India, but is a resident expert uh, in Tamil Nadu, the state which has voted today. 39 seats all going to polls. And Guru Murthy ji, thank you very much for joining me on the News Hour. Uh, let's let's focus on Tamil Nadu. 39 seats, what's your projection? Because that's what people want to know because uh, it's been a tough, uh, toughly contested elections. Uh, there has been Anna Malai for the first time. The BJP has had a face. Uh, he's done his padhyatra. He seems to have got a great response. He's spoken about a 25% uh, vote share. Where do you think uh, BJP is going to be in Tamil Nadu versus uh, DMK Congress Alliance? See, to understand uh, the political scenario today, you have to go back to 1989. When the ADMK got split, the Congress had an opportunity to come back. In fact, my friend Cho Ramaswamy, uh, despite the fact that he worked with us against uh, Rahul Gandhi's government in the Beaufort's issue, he decided to support the Congress. Uh, Mupnar was made the Chief Minister real candidate in the Assembly elections in January 1989. And like the Prime Minister has been coming and addressing rallies repeatedly, Rajiv Gandhi used to do at that time. And the results were very, very encouraging for the Congress. Because for the first time after more, more than a decade, the Congress came into the forefront as a national party and it got 20% votes. And the Jailalitha faction of the ADMK got 21% votes. The Janaki faction got 9% votes. The DMK, which got only 29% votes, won the election. But that election proved that the DMK can never win if the anti-DMK parties came together. This was the position that uh, Tamil Nadu politics reached in 1989. Unfortunately, afterwards, all the governments formed at the center were coalition governments. And uh, Congress or the DMK uh, or the BJP had to work with either the ADMK or the DMK. With the result, neither of them could make an impact in Tamil Nadu politics. So the nationalist politics in Tamil Nadu became anemic. Now, this election particularly recalls the 1989 elections with the BJP leading the charge as a national party. So, there is a, a welcome change in Tamil Nadu for three reasons. One, that uh, there is no real effective Dravidian leadership for the DMK after Karunanidhi. Karunanidhi had uh, uh, immense capacity to uh, articulate the Dravidian ideology suited to the times. But the current uh, leadership doesn't have the skill. In fact, it is not that kind of leadership at all. And we need not have to sp speak about the ADMK, which doesn't have the charisma of uh, uh, Jalalitha kind of uh, leader. This is where the advent of Anamalai and the effort that uh, the Prime Minister has put in. In the last five years, he has changed the perception about him in Tamil Nadu from being a person who was seen as anti-Tamil and a person who was asked to go back, Modi go back, into a person who is welcomed in Tamil Nadu, who is seen as a friend of Tamil Nadu, who is seen as someone who is speaking about the greatness of Tamil culture, language at the global level. So he changed the perception about himself in Tamil Nadu, like he changed his perception at the global level, where he was called a mini Hitler, and now he is being called as the most loved leader by a person like uh, the Italian Prime Minister. So he has the capacity to change the perception about himself. So there are two forces working. Uh, 
an effective local leader and a highly determined and supportive national leadership and admk fell into the trap by not aligning with bjp so the bjp has got an effective opportunity to bring nationalist force into tamil nadu politics in this election so mr guru murthy let me ask you udanidhi stalin's uh, statements uh, a raja's statements against hinduism uh, is this uh, something that is always expected uh, as part of dravidian politics uh, or or are people taking note of the fact that these statements came and congress party made no statement to dis uh, entangle itself or distance itself from these comments and will this have an electoral impact in tamil nadu and the rest of the country see the congress has lost itself you know the one of the most uh, uh, important leaders of the congress party evk langoman last month said congress means dmk and dmk means congress i mean i don't think uh, the congress could have uh, had a, a more negative perception about itself than this expression being made by uh, uh, congressman himself so the congress is over unless it rediscovers itself congress which fought the dravidian separatism and dravidian exclusiveness has now become part of the dmk and rahul gandhi has not uh, has not helped himself uh, or the congress party by towing another line he has almost said what evk is lagovan says the congress is over now coming to the dmk see that situation in 1960s and 70s in tamil nadu was that that the tamil nadu society and the dravidian politics were almost 60 70% aligned as anti hindu anti north anti hindi anti congress anti everything that uh, uh, the northern part of india represents that began changing after mb ramachandran split the a, a dmk and formed the admk and he began openly observing hindu rituals which deepened with the jayalalitha and so the society in tamil nadu is now a fully believing society in fact i often think that if there is any society in india which is most hinduized it is the tamil society but there is a difference tamil society is religiously hindu but it is not politically hindu but what people like uh, like uh, udayanidhi and raja are doing is playing the same politics of 1960s and 70s which is converting the religious hindu into a political hindu this is greatly favoring the uh, bjp which is able to align religious hinduism which the nationalist politics through cultural nationalism and so there is an undercurrent in tamil nadu politics which is acquiring vibrancy ferocity because of this kind of childish statements on thought a statement which karunanidhi would never make which uh, even stalin would be afraid of making because there is no central mind at work in the dmk as to how to project the dmk's dravidian ideology to suit the contemporary times and this is moving the electorate generally the tamil nadu people heavily in bjp favor so so let me ask you along with the leadership of anna malai as uh, the tamil nadu face the prime minister's outreach uh, Uh, to tamil nadu the amount of time and effort that he has invested over 5 years and over the last few months the number of visits he has made uh, the kind of uh, before the pran pratishtha the kind of uh, uh, temples uh, that he went to and how he got involved in the tamil nadu uh, culture uh, how do you think all of this is complementing each other because many people say annamala is the reason that aia dmk bjp alliance did not uh, happen and that could harm the bjp 
you see tamil nadu was uh, you know you have to go back a little to understand uh, the situation in tamil nadu how does it relate to the past you see tamil nadu was perhaps one of the most nationalist uh, regions in india during the freedom movement but unfortunately the tamil nadu congress never developed a local leadership kamaraj was a national leader c subramanian was a national leader and r vengataraman became a national leader and there was no local leadership which vacated the place for the dmk to push local aspirations to the forefront and rajaji with his anger against uh, kamaraj forged an alliance in 1967 the first major uh, uh, actually it was a formula to defeat the congress which was discovered in tamil nadu a 27 party alliance ranging from rajaji on the one side and uh, the muslim league on the other and the dmk won the elections in 1967 because of the fault of congress the congress handed over tamil nadu to the dmk and then in 1973 as i told you mg ramachandran broke the back of the dmk afterwards the dmk was never never the same and when this trend began uh, moving what happened is tamil nadu always struggled between the dmk and the admk that if you if the dmk did something horrendous they had to go to the admk and vice versa but there was always a longing that there should be a non dmk admk uh, force in tamil nadu and that has been welling up but there was no leadership there was no effort in the 25 years of alliance politics tamil nadu became the victim of uh, the regional parties dominating the national parties because of the incapacity of the nationalist parties to acquire a full majority which changed in 19 uh, 2014 and the, as i told you the admk handed over the field to the bjp to push its nationalist agenda now and now the opportunity has come for tamil nadu people who have been deeply desiring a change from the two dravidian parties and the beneficiary is the bjp there is one more the anti dmk votes which were which were uh, uh, gobbled up by the admk for over 40 years is now up in the open bjp is going to get a very substantial part of the anti dmk votes and the strategy of the prime minister is brilliant he never uttered one word against the admk he has projected the bjp as the main opponent of the admk dmk so as to take the anti dmk space as much as possible in fact when the prime minister himself speaks against okay. the dmk and tries to take the anti dmk space the capacity of the admk to project itself as anti dmk has been greatly reduced and anomalies entire politics was built on anti dmk platform so even the dmk has to now certify no no admk is our enemy you can understand the ground shift towards the bjp is no, making okay. the dmk afraid that the bjp will emerge should em, will emerge as the big force uh, over the admk and that is not good for them the admk feels the anti dmk space What? is fast slipping to the bjp and so it is saying no no we are only against the dmk actually the dmk and the admk at times say we are dravidian cousins we are dravidian uh, uh, pangalis as we call uh, sapindakas as to say in sanskrit <laughs> so they don't know how to handle the emergence of anamalai and the modi factor and the bjp and the nationalist surge in tamil nadu which is now a very important feature in the selection how much it will move the anti dmk votes to the bjp that will decide whether the bjp will emerge as the principal force against the dmk and will erode the admk or not in this election okay so every every election is all about numbers how many seats do you give 
the BJP in Tamil Nadu uh, and how many uh, do you give uh, to AIA, DMK and DMK? You see, in Tuglet magazine, of which I am the editor, we do a kind of an empirical study. We have done all the 40 constituencies, in which we find that in about three constituencies, the BJP is in the lead or uh, it will almost clinch. This is our, uh, then the BJP alliance. In seven constituencies, the BJP is number two, according to our assessment. And in 13 constituencies, the BJP is number three. But the most important thing is, in no constituency, the BJP secures less than 10 to 12% votes. The average voting of the BJP in our estimate will be somewhere between 15 at the minimum and 20 at the maximum. If this happens, Tamil Nadu politics will change forever. Well said. Uh, we'll wait and watch uh, because uh, the people of Tamil Nadu have voted today. Which way this goes? Uh, will this bring winds of change? Uh, people of Tamil Nadu will decide. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. S. Guru Murthy, for joining me. Always a pleasure speaking to you, learning from you, the topography you. and the politics of Tamil Nadu.